This is called a pizza peel. It's designed so that you can put a pizza in the oven and out of the oven. But it is kind of thick, so it is a little bit hard to grab the edge of the pizza. I run across a spatula. The spatula is made by Blackstone, and it is a burger spatula. And actually, I have found that I can get enough of it under a pizza to pull it out. And I'm not so sure that I would ever make a hamburger that big. And you can buy this separately, or at least I was able to buy it separately. This also comes with the hamburger kit that Blackstone sells and includes a couple other accessories. Uh, but I bought this by itself for about 10 bucks. And actually it's turned out to work out quite well because it's wide enough that I can get into the oven and pull things out. And for example, we're going to put some cornbread in here. Sometimes with all the fancy grills and things, it's just nice to cook something over the campfire. And for the few times that we do, we have this Red Camp grill. And they have two sizes, medium and large. This is the medium size. And it just simply has legs on it. And it's made out of stainless. And as soon as we get a good bed of cold, we'll be sticking this on the campfire and making our dinner. Baked potato. Now some people say not to use one of these because it pokes a hole in the steak and then it lets the juices run out. However, the alternative is to use one of these and you can probably drop your steak in the coals and you're not going to get a spatula in there unless it's a very long handle one because it's just too hot. Now some campers I've seen, they put these steaks right on the coals and I'm not quite at that point yet. Uh, but even then, if you did that, you'd still need something like this to get the steaks off. And if you grab them at the end like that, you're not going to poke them too bad. And when you're doing cast iron cooking, you probably want to pick yourself a wood spatula. Because number one, it does not scratch the cast iron. And a lot of cook experts will tell you that you don't want to use metal instruments on cast iron because you could scratch it. Now, Cowboy Kent Rollins will probably criticize me because I'm using a walnut piece of wood rather than mesquite like he uses, but that's fine. He does not have a grill whisperer apron like I do. Just kidding. He's pretty entertaining, and it's actually what kind of inspired me to get back into cooking with cast iron. Quite frankly, one of the reasons we go camping is to reconnect with the outdoors. After all, if you didn't really care that much about the outdoors, you would just stay at a hotel. But I can think of hardly nothing that is as satisfying as getting up in the morning, going outside when you got the cold, crisp air, put on a pot of coffee, make breakfast as the sun is coming up. I mean, that's just good for the soul. So any grill whisperer is going to want to carry some spices. And you can buy this multi-spice jar at most camp stores. This one's made by Coughlin's and Coleman and others I've seen have carried it. And it has, uh, you know, the big three, salt, pepper, and garlic salt. Then it has cayenne, curry, and paprika. Well, of course, the obvious problem is that you may use some spices and you may not use others. Or you may run out of some spices before you run out of the others. So it's okay, I suppose, if you're backpacking or something. Don't have a lot of room. But we need to get serious on the spices. Then I run across this little case, and this is a spice case. And it's kind of designed for camping, I suppose. And you open it up, and it actually has a centerpiece that you can take out. So you can use it with or without the centerpiece. And the centerpiece has four small little jars like this, and they're plastic. And then it has three little liquid bottles that hopefully do not leak. But most of the spices you buy are going to be these two inch diameter bottom and these are maybe five and a quarter, five and a half inch high. And this is the most efficient way generally to buy the spices. And you'll see that just perfectly fits in there. We have some inexpensive garlic powder and the St. Elmo Steakhouse seasoning. 
This is from a steakhouse in Indianapolis called St. Elmo. Been around a long time. It's a very good seasoning. In fact, we found that just putting them on hot dogs will really kick the hot dogs up a bit. Now, in most cases, I don't like the real hot food anymore, and my wife never did. So our spices are more flavorful than hot. We have some adobo seasoning. The big three, we buy this spice blend called M-Salt. It's made in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is not far from where I live. And it is just a blend of salt, pepper, and garlic. And then we have this Rib Rub, uh, Famous Dave's. And actually, it's not that hot. And we use it not only on ribs, but we've used it on chicken and uh, pork as well. And lastly, we have this stuff called Spike. And it's really great on vegetables. For instance, corn on a cob or baked potatoes. You put this on those and wow, it really works good. And in the top, we have one of some kind of a Chinese symbol and three of some kind of a Chinese symbol. Now, I know that a tablespoon is three teaspoons. So it may be that this is a teaspoon. This is a tablespoon. But it does look a little small. But I haven't tried it. That's just another kitchen storage idea for the RV.